Hi guys, welcome to episode 12 of reviewing and ranking my entire CD collection, the series that's going to take 94 years to complete. I think I'll have to pass it on down through generations to get to the end, as there's about 600 albums to go and I'm averaging about one every two weeks. Like I've said before, it's all about the journey. To skip the intro and jump straight into the review, see the timestamp and chapters below. But before you do that, like the video and subscribe to the channel for more videos of this ilk. So far in the series, I have reviewed Adele, The Addicts, AFI, 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 Afro Cluster, Christina Aguilera, Akala, All, Almeida and a hardcore punk compilation called American Hardcore, The History of American Punk Rock 1980-1986. I'm going alpha chronologically if you hadn't noticed. Today's album, similar to the last episode, is a punk compilation called And You Call This Civilization, released on Pumpkin Records in 2010, making me 14 years late to the party. As per American Hardcore, this CD will be disqualified from the end of the album ranking for not being a true album. Any CD attributed to various artists or a best of collection will receive a huge asterisk in the ranking, like Lance Armstrong when he won all those juiced up Tour de France's. Technically, American Hardcore is number one, but it has said big asterisks all over its cover. A musical blood transfusion has taken place. I mentioned best ofs, but I'm not even going to bother to review them. Singles Going Steady by The Buzzcocks is currently in the maybe pile. I do love that album. I've only ever really skimmed this album previously. I think I got it free when I ordered some stuff from Righteous Anger Records in 2014. Before I even started to listen to this, I'm impressed by the number of unreleased tracks on here. The packaging is unique with its recycled paper. The ethos of pay no more than a fiver is displayed. I'm not sure if this includes inflation. A 2010 fiver is a 2024 50p. The words copy wrong, reproduce freely, is encouraging listeners to share and burn this compilation as many times as they want. You have to love that. This record is dedicated to a close friend to all involved in making this compilation who tragically passed away. The details of his preventable death, neglected by the NHS for various reasons, is harrowing and soul destroying, and something that I've had to force myself to not cry about when reading. This CD can act as a release of healthy anger after this harrowing read. I wouldn't normally do this, but I think it would be good to go through this song by song, so every band gets some attention. I just thought I'd try something different. I'm not going to go too deep into every band's backstory. Just a 10 second review of each band and track. Right, let's get on with it. Track 1. Leftover Crack. Heroin or Suicide. The most overrated band in punk kicked the CD off. A band I could never get into or understand the hype around actually deliver half decent song, compared with the others I've heard with the same four chord progression. The lyrics are a bit depressing, but it was a good opener to be fair. Track 2. Human Error. Bombardas. Bomb Bombaz Bombazas. <laughs> Bom Bombazas. Raucous one minute punk in drop D that gets the job done for an angry blast. See, I told you some of these reviews would be short. Track 3, Hello Bastards, Leave Their World Alone. Dual vocals, similar to track 2 but with a massive slow build. A bit too noisy and chaotic for me. One song's okay, but I couldn't listen to a whole album. I could probably do an EP at a push. Track 4, Defcon Zero, Rats. If you like the filaments, you'll love this. The chorus is catchy but not cheesy. It's hard hitting but not overly intense like the previous two tracks. And it's more trebly, which is more to my taste. Track 5. Burnt Cross, Brian Hoare. Like Conflict, but a lot better than Conflict. Modern Anarcho with trademark Cockney accent with the lyrics audible so you can sing along easily enough. Best song on the album so far and the second song I've heard about anti-war legend Brian Hoare. I'll be looking for their full length stuff after this. Proper punk. Track 6. Moral Dilemma, Scars. Really, really fast hardcore punk with what sounds like at least two different singers. These guys are tight. It doesn't outstay its welcome. Good. Would recommend. Track 7, Total Lickers, Sistema de la Cura, I think I got that right. Sometimes punk is so fast and so chaotic and serious. I take a step back and it really makes me laugh at how silly it is, and I think about how people who don't listen to this stuff would react to it. This is one of those songs. That said, it's a solid enough track, if not a bit much. Track 8, Jesus Bruiser, Repercussions. Started off a bit emo and thought it was a bit of a change of pace but then went to the same pace as all the previous songs pretty quickly. The mix is a bit higgledy piggledy pew on this. Could have done with a better mixer. I could live without hearing this again. It doesn't excite me nor trigger me. I like the section towards the end to be fair. Sounded like Zounds but a lot angrier. Track 9. Flux of Pink Indians. Charity Hilarity. Didn't realise these boys were still going. Or had reformed. Hitler is still a Nazi is one of my favourite punk songs. This live performance is tight. Staccato Anarcho sounds great. Track 10, Oi Poloi, SS Politician. 
I love Doi Polloi going into this CD and have the SS Politician album, which has nothing to do with Nazi officers and is all about a ship, apparently. A classic anarcho meets Oi Band. This song has been the best produced on the compilation so far. Guitars sound massive, and the random Kaylee section at the end was so unexpected and glorious. Burnt Cross is still in the lead for best song, but this is a close second. Track 11, Subhumans, Point of View. Uh, the Subhumans, you'll be hearing a lot about them in this series. Absolutely classic punk band. There are so many better songs and point of view on Internal Riot that they should have picked. I would have picked something else, but an average subhuman song is better than most other bands' best songs. Track 12, Dead Subverts, Taking Civil Liberties. Another band that has some dual vocals going on. Straight up hardcore punk ditty, properly produced and mixed. Some good guitars, bass interludes. Stuff about 1984. Would recommend to people who like rudimentary peni. Track 13, The Casual Terrorist if you want peace. Like Paul Carter but more intense and doesn't sing like a Viz comic. It's quite piercing, it would be good to hear this properly produced. There are some really good taglines in this. The puppets change but the strings remain the same and if you want peace, pr prepare yourselves for war. Track 14, The Afternoon Gentleman. Stupid d This is just grindcore noise. Imagine pig squealing, that's what it sounds like mixed with someone throwing up. I did not get on board with this one at all. This might be the worst song I've heard doing this series. I genuinely can't understand why anyone would choose to listen to it. Sorry lads, gentlemen, shall we say. Track 15, The Lobotomies, core. Great band name. Wouldn't have sounded out of place on the American Hardcore compilation. Same sort of production. Great guitar solo towards the end. Would want to hear more of these guys. Track 16, Paradox, no control. This guy's got a weird voice, reminds me a bit of Steve Ignorant being ironic. Decent enough punk song that's not that memorable. Next, track 17, Rash Decision, EST. Really tight band with growly vocals, reminded me a bit of the Melvins, solid. Track 18, Conflict, Carlo Giuliani. I think I butchered that. Conflict are like Burnt Cross, but not as good. I always get the feeling Colin the Singer sings the same tune on every song. It is a good tune to be fair. Maybe I've not heard enough conflict, but I've never been impressed with the production on anything I've heard. The middle section build is cool, as is the guitar progression. They could have made it more of a breakdown. They went full crass at the end with the snare and everything. Track 19, Power is Poison, War on the System. Not sure if these guys are Irish, but they sound like a cross between early Stiff Little Fingers and Regan Youth, which can only be a good thing, right? Track 20, Active Slaughter, Price of Silence. Good contrast of two vocalists. One's like Embrace Era Ian Mackay, and the other one is like more grovelly than that. Can't think of a comparison at the minute. This was alright, but probably about a minute too long. It did get a bit repetitive. Track 21, Friday Den 13E, Fran Fodstein Till Graven. Intense, a bit like Afternoon Gentleman with more melody. Not my cup of tea. Would take it in live and love it for 10 minutes, I'm sure. It's the last 30 seconds now and I'm dying to hit skip. Sorry, lads. All lasses. Sorry, Friday then. Track 22, Appalachian Terror Unit. Armageddon won't be brought by the gods. I really like the idea behind this track. The sludgy instrumental over a spoken word diatribe in the same vein as I am no feeble Christ, not me. Or how can you buy or sell the sky? the warmth of the land. It then took a left turn and went really intense. There's some really angry people out there if this is all they listen to. Again, would enjoy this live rather than on recording. Track 23, Death Mold, In God You Rust. These vocals are way too piercing for me. I'm starting to sound like a boomer now, I appreciate that. I'm getting a bit thrashed, grinded out now. Songs like this should only be 30 seconds long. Again, I could take this live, the velocity is another level. Track 24, Agrotoxico. Viver Condenado. Sorry, my Portuguese is terrible. I presume that's right. Slightly less intense. Fast as Usain Bolt Hardcore Punk from Brazil gets the job done. Track 25, War Coma, The Feeding. The last track of the first CD is eight minutes long. That's way too long, that. Reminds me of Love Dump, but a bit cleaner. The intro didn't need to be that long. Another really intense song. Progressive thrash meets grindcore power violence. Some very operatic chord progressions going on. The sections don't gel well together. It got a bit repetitive towards the end. Should have used their best ideas and made it three minutes. CD2, track one. Harajan, Portland Street. Good blend of ska and punk, really catchy trombone riff. It's like a hard edge version of the specials with Glenn Danzig on vocals. Track two, Autonomads, Back to Bark. We've arrived at the hard edge Mancunian ska section of the compilation, I'm all for it. Saxon bass bounce off each other, makes you want to dance rather than wince like a lot of the songs on this album. Mother Nature is the only real governor of the land is such a great lyric. 
Officer Down, Ammunition. Hard hitting like Cap Down, but without saxophone and more woes. The mix is a bit dodgy, but it's solid enough song you can jump around to in the pit. Track 4, The Restart, Square One. A bit like if Casual Nausea were a ska band. A really angry, aggressive version of the specials. Scar verse and punky chorus contrast works really well. Always see loads of restarts shirts at festivals and I can hear why. I'm a fan. Track 5, Global Parasite, Priceless Advice. A bit sceptical to review this because I know them, Dave in particular. We're from the same neck of the woods. I always said I wasn't going to review any music by friends or peers on the channel, but even if I didn't know them, I would still like this. It's as tight as anything. It's good, I like it, and I'm not just saying that. It's not too heavy. Listen to Global Parasite. Track 6, Jackal, Clones. I love the Operation Ivy-esque feel to the music, but can't handle the screamo vocals. The second vocalist is Lintesque. He's half decent, but the other one is too much on the same note. It's not my cup of tea. This song was about two and a half minutes too long. Track 7, Suicide Bid, Don't Lie Down. Punk rock dub supergroup. I love anything involving J-Terrestrial. Find Suicide Bid a bit hit and miss, but this is one of their better songs. Track 8, Nino Zombie. Plan 9 from Outer Space. Frantic scar core with a bit too much going on. A bit like Link Katie, but they forgot to tune their instruments. Track 9, Six Fish. I live with my mum. One of the best songs on the album. Hilarious backing vocals. Their album's worth a listen to as well. They're like the Libertines if they had a crusty edge to them and weren't pretentious. Track 10. Death Rose. Crave to the Rave. My ears aren't ready for this. It's a really good concept mixing AFI late 90s punk with drum and bass. It's a crossover of punk and rave that I've never heard before. I do like the innovation but the vocals aren't my cup of tea. Track 11. Two Sick Monkeys. Why? Definitely a contender for best song on the album. Drum and bass duo but not like Death Rose. The bass is fat with a PA. Pete Monkey's voice in the breakdown is perfect, like he is deflated by the state of the world and how war hungry we are. The delivery is more effective than just screaming. The best band in the world. Only cool kids will get the reference. Track 12. Zounds. Damaged. Sounds a lot like Nirvana's lighter stuff, which isn't a bad thing. Doesn't sound anything like the Zounds song I've heard before. Can't cheat karma or war. On second hearing, I didn't really enjoy this. Track 13. Johnny One Lung. Fix up. Probably sick of the Billy Bragg comparisons, but it's Billy Bragg with a harmonica. On research, it's mad that's the bloke from the filaments. It sounds nothing like him. There's a bit of Paul Weller in there as well. It's decent. It's different to the rest of the album. Track 14. Defiance of Higher. Bikes and Bridges. It's good music to have a drink to. Folk punk with violins. It's not great if you not having a drink. Track 15, Anarcho Foco. You know who we are and so do we. Sloppy Anarcho Foco. It's a terrible name. It's like if the class were called Punko or Napalm Death Grind Coro. I'm filing this under Not My Cup of Tea. Track 16, Mischief Brew, River Flow. It's a levelers cover. I'm getting a bit tired now to be honest. Yeah, it's good. It's folk punk. I'm starting to realise I'm not a big fan of folk punk. I thought I was a bigger fan of it than I actually am. Track 17, Contempt, Nuclear Power. Chorus is pure early subhumans. Could have been on the day the country died. It's pretty decent. Track 18, Rent to Kill, The Subject. I'm sorry this review's gone into a game of charades. This band sounds like propaganda and no effects. I like it. It's mixed well. It's melodic. Would listen to more stuff by these guys, even if the breakdown was a bit emo. Track 19, The Usual Suspects, Remote Controlled. The intro is literally eat the meat by no effects. So much so they could have probably sued him. Goes into a bit of a culture shock sounding ditty. It's not bad. Track 20, The Stupid Stupid Henchman. They make me blind. If the Afternoon Gentlemen were a ska band, they would sound like this. Crack rock steady that's too intense for my weak ears. Second worst song after the Afternoon Gentlemen. Track 21, Split Side, Voices from the Dead. This could easily be on the first Arctic Monkeys album. That's a massive compliment in my eyes. It's got a bit more of a punk edge to them and it's getting heavier and heavier. I'll have to seek out more Split Side after this review. Track 22, The Infested, Not Dead Yet. Can't judge this fairly because the mix is a bit iffy. The guitars and vocals are too overbearing. This is for fans of Leftover Crack. It's short and sweet. This would have had a better write-up if it was nearer the beginning of the review. Admittedly, I am getting a little bit tired. Track 23, Dropping Bombs, Recede. Irish Scar and Melodic Punk Mix. I like it. Sorry that wasn't more in depth. I'm getting tired. The vocals are really on point. Track 24, The Extinguishers. Solidarity. This Scar core band are on another level to most of us features on this album. It's produced and mixed really well and it's tight. Reminds me of Random Hand. I'm surprised I've never heard of these guys before. They should be bigger. They're a bit unlucky to be buried this far into the mix. They should have been a lot higher up hanging around with the likes of the Autonomats. And finally, last song, track 25, Bang Bang Cocktail, I Say Love. Bit cheesy. I wasn't a fan. 50 bands, one review done. My overall thoughts is that I love the ethos of the CD. The encouragement to share it freely. The recycled paper the tribute to Pingu 
The band's thriving in the underground DIY punk community and contributing positively to the scene that is a way of life for some people. This is why it's hard to criticise and admit that there are 22 skippable tracks out of 50. That's 44% of the album I didn't enjoy musically. The main reason being the songs were either too intense, too long or not mixed and produced well enough. The moments I did enjoy I will be looking into more music by the likes of Burnt Cross, The Extinguishers, Defcon Zero and The Restarts, which I will be thankful for this CD for introducing me to. Like I said I would love to give this CD more out of 10, but with 44% of the CD being skippable, I have to give it a 5.5 out of 10. Even though it's a 5.5, I'm still happy I have it in my collection and I'm glad that it has introduced me to some new bands. Every self-respecting punker, grind, core man, scar core enthusiast should have this in their collection. I just wish to like more of it. And now to rank and you call this civilization amongst the rest of the CDs already reviewed in the series. So obviously it's not gonna go above American Hardcore, All Hollows, We Don Land, Social Media Circus, 21, it's not getting above any of those. Mass Nerder, nope. Stripped, nope. Freedom Lasso. It's better than December Underground, I'd rather listen to that. And it's better than The Addicts, so I'm gonna slot it there. So in between, the Addicts 27 and AFI Sing the Sorrow, I'm going to put A New Callless Civilization. Of course, it's going to have the big asterisk next to it because it's not really a real album. So here's a rundown of the new chart. Number 10, we've got AFI with December Underground. Number 9, we've got The Addicts with 27. New entry with the asterisk, we've got A New Callless Civilization, a punk rock compilation. Number 8, we've got AFI with Sing the Sorrow. Number 7, A Carla Freedom Lasso. Number six, Christina Aguilera, Stripped. Number five, we've got All with Mass Murder. Number four, we've got Adele with 21. Number three, we've got Almeida with Social Media Circus. Number two, we've got Afro Cluster with We Don Land. Number one, we've got AFI with All Hallows. And disqualified at the top, we've got the American Hardcore Compilation. Thank you for getting this far into the video. Do you own this album? Who's your favourite and least favourite band featured in today's review? What's your favourite compilation in your collection, punk or otherwise? Feel free to let me know in the comments. The next review is Life at Tether's End by Andy T. I'm also doing some current albums coming out and doing some top five lists as well, so make sure you never miss an upload by hitting that subscribe button. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.